As the mysterious group known as Leviathan strengthens its stranglehold on the world, the entire DC Universe will need to come together and stop them. All this and more on the pages of Event Leviathan, issue number one. Let's hop on in together and find out what happens next, shall we? Alrighty then, so as we join the comic, Batman is infiltrating some unknown building. And you know, can we just stop here for a second and say, holy crap, we are reading a Batman story written by Brian Michael Bendis and drawn by Alex Maleev. Like, seriously, this is pretty huge. If you went back in time over a decade, decade ago to 2008 and told comic reading me, hey, you know the team on this Daredevil book you like? Well, they're going to be writing Batman one day. Sadly, this fanboy high ends up being truly fleeting because we still got to talk about event Leviathan. Batman runs into Lois Lane, who is also working this Leviathan case, which you would know all about if you've been reading Action Comics, the book wherein this newest event spins out of. And it's really strange, though, that in that book, Batman and Lois Lane are on pretty good terms, even having worked together to try and rescue you a kidnapped Clark Kent just recently, here they're overly aggressive to one another and start dick measuring for basically no reason. Also, despite the fact that we've had like two other pre-logs before this, the characters still waste a ton of time getting you up to speed on what Leviathan is and what they've been doing, mainly destroying all the major intelligence groups within the DC Universe, the DEO, Argus, Task Force X, etc, etc. I understand that every comic is someone's first, but seriously, if you're picking up a book called Event Leviathan at this point, Point and you don't know what Leviathan is slash what they've been doing, you really only have yourself to blame. Now, while sifting through the wreckage of this building, Lois and Batman end up finding Steve Trevor, former agent of Argus and Wonder Woman's on-again, off-again boyfriend. It seems that he's the last one remaining after this brand new Argus installation, codenamed the Odyssey, came under attack by the strange interdimensional creature that's been killing slash disappearing people. Steve was supposed to protect a doctor woman by the name of Strand, but in the end, everyone ended up falling prey to this monster, except for him, who ended up getting bubbled and protected for reasons he's still not totally sure. What we do know for certain, though, is that this ordeal has truly rocked Steve to his core, basically leaving him shell-shocked. He's seeing enemies all over the place, wondering that if Leviathan let him live, if only so they could carry their message, which they seem to be doing a lot of Leviathan letting people go. Either they're really bad at their jobs, or they're really good at marketing, I can't quite decide. Steve, also apropos of pretty much nothing, gets it into his head that Lois must already be a member of Leviathan, given how close she is to all the major players that have disappeared. Honestly, you could make the same argument about Batman. But he figures that he should take matters into his own hands and shoot Lois dead just to be safe, which, you know, doesn't really make him seem like he's not working for Leviathan, but... If I keep poking holes at this rate, the video will never be done. Lois ends up catching one in the shoulder, but is ultimately saved by the return turn of Green Arrow, who I'm just happy to see considering he doesn't have a book right now. Green Arrow has also been working the Leviathan case, which you would know if you read the free comic book day tie-in yet another time they tried to start this Leviathan story. Batman figures if they all work together and pool their resources, they'll be able to have this case closed in no time. We also find out that they're not the only heroes working this caper, as The Question is watching them from afar, too. The Question, a character whose relationship to the superhero community in this post DC Rebirth post New 52 era is really up in the air right now. Now as the comic winds down, we check back on in with Dr. Strand wherever she's been disappeared to. It seems that she's being well taken care of and the person who has her is actually a big fan of her work with the Odyssey and wants to take it to the next level. As we soon discover, the person holding Dr. Strand turns out to be none other than the red-faced leader of Leviathan, whose name we don't actually know and who I'm just calling Leviathan. He says together they will tear down the old world and build a new one, you know, typical villain stuff. And so that was Event Leviathan issue number one, everybody, and overall, as someone who's been following this story from Action Comics till now, I thought it was a lot of nothing and a lot of time wasting. Really, I think the only way to properly enjoy this issue is to have read nothing about Leviathan until this very issue so you can get up to speed. I'm excited to see frequent Bendis collaborator Alex Maleev get to draw more DC characters. The only problem is here in this issue, he doesn't get to draw them doing anything interesting, just sitting and talking and listening. What a serious waste of serious talent. And while we're on the subject of talking, again, all these weird little Bendis-isms are bleeding into this book now, and it keeps taking me out of the action. I swear I had to reread Batman's speech bubble several times because the syntax and how the sentences were all put together just felt so strange and alien and so un-Batman. He even uses the word scosh. Which, you know, is all well and good when Bendis was writing characters from New York. I gave him a 
lot more leeway with stuff like that, but it just feels so strange coming out of the mouth of Batman. Overall, I'd give this a 5 out of 10. I certainly didn't get a lot out of this, and I hope that if this is the first time you're picking up something Leviathan related, you'll get more out of it than I did. Oh, hey there everyone, I'm Cape Jewel. Thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. This is normally the part where I tell you to follow me on Twitter at Cape Jewel, check out my Patreon page, my Twitch page, my Instagram, pretty much everything. Don't really have much of a format for this one. Someone just told me that I should change up these outros to keep them from getting stale, and that's what I'm doing. I, uh, I, I, I got a new hoodie. There's other videos you can watch if you want them. I, uh... Don't really know where I'm going here, working, working without a net. So, uh, thank you for watching. That's appreciated. Maybe give me a like, a subscribe, smash a button if there's a smashable button around. That would be most appreciated. And, uh, yeah, did, uh, did I mention I got a new hoodie? Um, bye everyone. Also, smack things. Smack some. Yep, that's, that's what I do. That's my thing. Yep, bye.